story of the German Kiwis is a twisted tale of hard-working craftsmen, far-out hippies, terrible wars, pioneers, spies, suspicions and famous public toilets. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm calling myself a Kiwi, eh? It's a German, very strong German accent. <laughs> Hi, mate. How are things? It's good. <laughs> it's good. Beautiful day in Wellington Oh, today. fantastic. Yeah. Looking yeah. at you, you, uh, you don't look like a fresh German, you know? You've got your T-shirt and your shorts. I uh, never look back. I liked, wanted to blend in and uh, didn't want to feel being an outsider. Do you think the Germans have a very good sense of humour? <laughs> Thank you, Father. Every nation has its own way of making jokes. <laughs> Do you think the Germans have a very good sense of humour? Humour? Humour. German jokes are unbelievably unfunny. You know, jokes, laughter. Uh, no. It's hard to define it, though, what we would laugh about more. German humour, I don't know. A good, funny comedy in Germany has to include at least one person falling into the water. That's the ultimate challenge. This community was a real slice of Germany in 19th century New Zealand. You get a real sense by checking out the inscriptions on the headstones in the graveyard. Every word is in German. And you get the same feeling looking at the headstones in Puhoi, a couple of hundred kilometres north. And I'm very thankful, Danke Schöne, for one of those names in particular. The first settlers that arrived here in uh, 1863 came from a region called Bohemia. And uh, this is where they settled, Puhoi, which means I'm Bohemian. I can't see it myself. But what's the most famous Kiwi brand with German roots? Excellent. I've got them in my colour. That could go with my eyes on a Sunday morning. I would think that Bendix Hallenstein and Hallensteins itself was responsible for, 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 for erecting prominent buildings in most New Zealand cities. This wind-beaten island in the middle of Wellington Harbour is now a sanctuary for Tuatara and Giant Weta. But during both world wars, it was our very own Alcatraz. I had one brother only, he was older, and he was away fighting in Egypt while my father was interned on Soames Island. Yeah, Grandfather Gustav. Here he was, getting chucked on this island for, I think, a, some telegraph, a, a work telegraph, that had got him in the, uh, in the poos with the government. When the war finished, they uh, kept him on the island for another 12 months. After the war? Yeah, after the war. He would have lost a bit of business. I think he would have. And I, from my understanding, they actually had to sell the uh, family home in, uh, in Auckland just to cover all the debts that the business had incurred. I sent my students down when I taught it for the first time to observe an Anzac Day ceremony. And I thought it was just fair to go and attend it myself. Here I was standing as an ex-enemy country with a German accent and I didn't dare to say a word. And I just prayed and I haven't prayed in a long, long time that none of my students would come and ask me a question and I had to open my mouth and answer it. <laughs> yeah, so you, you have to live with it, you are right. The Scandinavian story is one of stalwart pioneers, sporting legends and simple style. No, I don't think of myself as a Scandinavian at all and I think it's got a lot to do with the fact that I'm brown. There's a huge part of me that is Scandinavian, and I have never ever bothered or attempted or even tried to find out anything about that side. 
Granddad Ted is my mum's dad and a direct connection to our Scandinavian story. Lovely. So how far back does our Scandinavian history go Ooh, in New Zealand? It goes right away back. Pastor Hans Rees. I don't even know where he is buried, so that's the funny thing. But I will find out, it's my mission. But you can find out. Where do you think I should start? Danny Burke. What do you reckon? My great-great-grandfather, Pastor Reese, was sent down here to a couple of farmers who'd migrated here in the 1870s. I know, it looks kind of cosy. The thing is, though, I, I can't even imagine how it would feel to spend months and months at sea to arrive at a place you've never heard of and build a community in this, like, dark, dark forest. I don't know, you feel pretty small. Tell me about Hans Madsen Rees. Yeah, he came to serve the Norswood congregation uh, in the early 1880s. And somewhere in here we actually have a photograph of him. Oh, here we oh, are. Come on, let's have a look. <laughs> oh, wow. The actual immigration of families was 1871 under the Vogel scheme. Julius Vogel deciding that it was like a think big project of its era. They were trying to develop the infrastructure of the Lower North Island. They were trying to get roads and railways and things through it. This is the old settler's cemetery in Dannyburg. I'm getting close, Grandad Ted. Not really big on lurking through cemeteries. <laughs> so yeah, Pastor Reese, where are ya? I should just be able to feel you. <laughs> Here he is. Pastor Hans Madsen Rees. Hey, mate. <laughs> My name's Stephanie. I'm your great great granddaughter. <sighs> well, I've had to travel a long way to find this. No, not Denmark, Sweden, Norway, or Finland. But Henderson, can you please help me? Bye. I'd like to be born again. Thank you. This is the girls. Is this the girls' one? It is very much a girls' one. I wanted to be a boy. Well, generally, uh, girls weren't boys in the Viking age. Well, these guys are fully into keeping me. Uh, the North Spirit alive and well, or dead as the case may be. There are a dozen or so Scandi clubs that are still active. But mostly the founders of Ganyverk and Northwood made farewell to their homelands a very long time ago. <laughs> Personally, I would like to think there's a little bit more to their Swedish heritage than ever. If I want to talk about Scandinavian music, I would talk about um, Grieg and Sibelius. Beautiful. Treats. Right, anything by Abba? Concert for one, Scandinavian as hell.